I have a lot of patients who come to me asking for breast augmentation, but one of the leading objections that they may have or questions that their family has is about the silicone that is inside some implants. There have been a lot of development in the last few years regarding the silicone that is available and a lot of companies that produce these implants make a lot of big claims. So I thought it would be interesting to see exactly what it is that's inside these implants and to cut them in half to see exactly what we find. So I thought what we would do first is to cut uh, a cohesive gel implant in half. These implants have been available since about 2006 and uh, they're pretty good. They're pretty good implants. They're supposed to be this sort of uh, material that will not ooze and um, sort of uh, flow all over the patient and therefore they shouldn't be able to be uh, absorbed by the patient's body. And obviously this was a big advance over the, the liquid style implants that we had available up until the 1990s. Um, as I cut this thing in half you can see it's a little bit sticky but in fact, it does hold its form even when I squeeze it and um, sort of bounces back into the same shape. So I have very little concern about that particular one. This next implant is what the company who makes it calls a gummy bear. Now, don't worry about the outer shell being kind of frosty. That's a completely separate subject. It's the gel inside that we're interested in. Um, but this is supposed to be a form-stable implant, and they claim that it is superior to the first one. As I cut it in half here, you can see that it's still kind of sticky and gooey. Um, sort of sticks to itself quite a bit. And while I agree that it probably isn't going to ooze and go anyplace, it really has pretty much the same consistency of the first one. Given all of this, I decided to maybe use one more implant, cut one more in half. So now this implant is created by a company that claims it is truly form stable. And their point is that although it is soft, it really uh, does hold its form. And if you squeeze it and let go, God forbid that it was ever uh, ruptured inside of a patient, the, the gelatin inside, the silicone gel will not go anyplace. It will not ooze anyplace and it will not be resorbed by the body. I can tell you as I'm cutting it in half that it is certainly less sticky than the first two and really does seem to, um, you know, it, it cuts a little nicer and it seems to hold its form a little better. Um, as, I, as I squeeze it, it also bounces back to shape uh, a little bit more um, adeptly than the other one. Um, it seems to me it probably is a little bit safer, although I have to admit it's a little bit firmer than the first one too. So what does all this mean? Well, I think that all three of these implants performed better than the old liquid silicone gel implants did. And I was really glad to see for myself that they all really did have some kind of a gummy bear property. That is that they sort of snap back into place even when ruptured. I mean, these are actually cut in half and they still come back to form. That's why they call them form stable. Um, I, I'm kind of asking myself, if an implant like this was in my sister and I knew that she had a rupture, would I really care? I mean, look, of course I would go ahead and change it, but I don't think that I'd be in a big rush to do that. I, I really don't think that we have concern or need to be too worried about uh, this type of an implant having a rupture. Uh, and so if you're thinking about having breast augmentation, I hope that you'll consider having a silicone implant because they really do seem to have a, a nicer cosmetic feel than uh, saline implants do. And uh, I really think it's a superior product. Um, they feel much more natural, and I think most of my patients are happier with silicone today.